sharing the screen just to remind. So the, the great and wonderful Sabrina Bershad is going to close us out here, but I'm still going to set things up in uh, with the, you know, stay healthy, don't do anything you shouldn't be doing, and don't hurt anybody or yourself. There you go. Um, you guys know all this already. Pin Sabrina. It's under Kali's Fight Club. You'll be able to see her real well, ask questions in chat, and turn on closed captions. And I'll turn it over to Sabrina. And by the way, I met her at, uh, what, a couple of years ago at some training camps. Uh, was impressed right away. She's fun. She's a great teacher. I think you'll enjoy it. So I'll, over to you, Sabrina. Thanks, Ty. Um, I'm Sabrina. I'm a guru of Collis Illustrissimo. I'm located in Rochester, New York. I moved here from the Philippines where I was training under Arnold Narzo. Um, and before that, I lived in Israel and trained with John Escudero and Angelo Garcia was one of my training partners who presented earlier. Um, so, oh, you can find me at collisfightclub.com or on Instagram same name, Collis Fight Club, or just message me on Facebook. Um, all right, so let's get into it. So Collis Illustrissimo, you guys have had a lot of FMA today. Um, you've probably seen a lot of similar motions. There's a few things that are very distinctly Illustrissimo, and we'll go into that today. I hope everybody has a stick. If you don't have a stick, you can use a knife, machete, a pen, whatever whatever you want to um, to carry. You can sit down, you can stand up, but we're gonna be doing some, some striking. So I know some of, most of you might not have a partner. Right now I'm going crazy because I'm used to sparring a lot and in isolation, that's hard to do. I'm a fencing coach when I'm not coaching um, Illustrissimo. Um, so sparring is what we do. Uh, so I've been going a little bit nuts. So. Take your stick or your knife or what what have you, a spoon from the kitchen, I don't know. All right, so a couple things. In Illustrissimo, you want to utilize as much of your weapon length as you possibly can. Um, so that means if you have a stick, hold it all the way at the end with no puño, none, none of this. You want the full length. You can still hit with the puño, it's still hard but you still have the length of your weapon. Um, clearly, if you use a, a blade of some sort, they usually have something on the puño, so you can't really hold it by the edge edge, but do what you can. Um, all right, so you can do this sitting down if you can't stand up, but if you can, put one foot behind like a boxing stance, knees gently bent just a little bit, one foot behind the other, and your back foot up on the ball of your foot. Whichever foot is behind, it's the one where the heel is up. If it's this foot at any point, that heel is up. I'm a lefty, so most of you, I assume, are right-handed, so I'll be mirroring you. So the main strike of Illustrissimo would be the Arco strike. You might have heard of it. It starts on this side, the open abierta side, and it ends on the abierta side. Now the blade curves around. And if you have, if you're doing this in a mirror or if you have someone standing in front of you, you're aiming for the opposite temple or the side of the neck of the person in front of you. So it's going to curve around and come straight back up. That's called your arco strike. Notice my hand is in front of me. I don't start with my, with my hand cocked back. This is a telegraph a lot of the time. When you're sparring someone and they jerk their hand back suddenly, that's go time. So instead of telegraphing, you're gonna throw the tip down. If you have a stick, notice that the edge of my blade curves around this way and comes back up. So just throw the tip. At the bottom of the strike should be like this. Your blade is pointing at your opponent. The tip of your weapon is pointing at your opponent. You don't want this to happen. Now that is something, if you have small wrists or you don't have the muscle, the musculature developed yet, 
Um, that is something that you just work on. And it comes. It comes the more you work on it. So that's the Arco Strike. Everyone stand up or take your weapons, and we're going to do it 10 times. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you come straight back. Notice my elbow stays in. I don't want to throw my arco strike so that my elbow is way out here. Keep your elbow tight and inside so that you can really move quickly. Now footwork is just boxing footwork. When you, um, when you move, when you move to the side, you wanna pivot with it and we'll come right back to that. But let me give you a few more strikes. So this is your main strike, your arco strike. Since you're in quarantine right now, probably you don't really, you can't really do too many drills. This is the opportunity that you have to work on your strikes like crazy. Work them so that you can throw them in your sleep. There are a hundred of them without getting tired. So that will really help your sparring. And just in general, you'll just be stronger and faster if you practice your strikes a lot. So let's continue with strikes. We have our Arco strike. We have Real, which you might know from um, a different style. A lot of styles have this. It's an X strike, but it's more vertical. You're aiming for the crown of someone's head, the real strike, which is why it's called that. So you want to, if you, if you have a mirror or a, a training partner, you're going to aim for the top of their head. It doesn't have to be totally straight. It's like a very narrow X. So you're going to go this way and this way. Let's just practice that 10 times. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, your Anglo strike, which everybody has in every style. You're aiming for the side of the neck, side of the head. It's your basic. One and six or one and two, but we're gonna do that. Notice that my elbow is staying in. I'm not allowing this to happen. This makes for very wild, very predictable strikes. Keep your elbow in so that you can really throw a strong, use your hips. It's very much like boxing. So let's do it. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, next one we have planchada, which is our horizontal strike. A couple things about planchada. Now, illustrissimo is a bladed style. Of course, we use sticks as well, uh, but it's very it's known for its blade work. So when you're doing the planchada, it's a cut through. You turn your blade and cut back. You don't want this to happen while you're, you don't want an extra move. Cut straight back. Let's do that 10 times. One, two, even here my elbow stays in. Three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, good. Now, our last strike that we'll go through, it's called Aldabes. Aldabes is a like a reversed Angelo strike. It's an X strike, an X strike. And it starts from a low stance. And it cuts up and cuts up this way. Cut up, cut up. It's not quite as powerful 
as the Anglo strike, but it's very tactical. So you can mix it in with your other strikes if you want, but we're just gonna do Aldeves, Aldeves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. Let's practice our arco once more because that's a that's a, a more complicated strike for people and not not so usual to have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Does anybody have any questions so far? Looks good in comments. Okay, cool. All right, so let's talk about some footwork and then we'll get into what can you do if you can't spar anyone? I know, I'm going nuts. All right, I need my lovely assistant. Where's my lovely assistant? Rob? Okay, so now I'm gonna demo a little bit about why the footwork is, is the way it is. So here's my lovely assistant, Rob. Okay, so let's say you have your opponent standing right in front of you, as you, you might do right before sparring. So I'm gonna have Rob facing me. Um, and let's say he throws, oh, I should give him a weapon, shouldn't I? So let's say we're in closer range and he throws a strike just like this, and I wanna move. I wanna, uh, hit it away, and of course I'm gonna strike as I do that, but focus on my footwork. Notice, if I pivot, I'm still facing him. If I don't pivot, I'll show you, I'm gonna block me for a second. Let's say I do the same thing and I don't pivot. Now what am I facing? Not my opponent, and now he's in a good position to just fire one off. So instead, when I do this, I move and now I'm facing him, I can, I still have the upper hand. If he wants to come back at me, I can jam his, his arm. I can push here, jam with this arm and just come in here. So it's always, thank you. It's always important to pivot. We'll get to it. So, all right. So to practice your footwork, we're going around in a circle. Imagine, now in the Philippines, we would just take a rock and like scrape a, an asterisk on the floor, on the ground. But if you're in your house, you don't wanna do it that way. You might not wanna mark up the floors at all. So instead what you can do is you can just, um, take someone in your house and make them be your opponent, put something that just represents your opponent, like a lamppost or something right in front of you and pivot around that so that you're constantly facing that and just pivot around in a circle, practicing your basic strikes. So let's say I'm just going to do combate general, general combat. I'm gonna throw just one um, angelo, planchada al de best. And that's the pattern. I'm just gonna keep throwing, either from abierta or from serrata, from the closed side or from the open side. So let's say I'm just gonna keep that up as I pivot. And I'm just gonna go around in circles, just practicing that combination. Set your timer for two minutes and just go. Practice pivoting while you're striking. Then, I mean, I'm sure you could do any kind of boxing combination, practice any combination you want where you're just continually striking and continually moving. Now, um, footwork's very important. Small footwork is very, very important. Um, big motions have their place, of course, 
You want to be able to jump back out of the way or suddenly lunge forward, of course. But the little footwork is what saves you. So get your feet moving, jump rope, da da da, whatever you need to do, and practice just moving in and out. Put uh, some, you know, obstacle course on the floor and just practice just moving small motions wherever you go, continually striking as you go. And that's how you practice your footwork. If you want, we can set a timer and do it now. People are really into it. We can just do that. But I had a couple questions about abanico in close range. Um, yeah, we can do that. I actually have had some questions about close range in Illustrissimo because a lot of people have the impression that Illustrissimo is a long range style. It's not, I mean, we love long range, of course, but it's an everything style. Tatang was a prize fighter. He was a guerrilla warrior. Um, he fought at every range. So um, actually, Illustrissimo close range is one of my favorites. I'll bring back my assistant, Rob. Okay, so I kind of was showing it before. I was showing the um, close range abanico. So if you want to take it. So a couple principles of Illustrissimo. One is utilize your whole weapon and always be threatening your opponent with some part of your weapon, whether it be the tip or the blade, something. Keep it in front of your opponent. Don't jack your arm back, keep it in front. Another thing is go direct. Go direct to the target. Don't mess around with their weapon. Unless it's absolutely necessary, of course, sometimes you must block directly on the weapon, but oftentimes it's not necessary and you can just go right for the target. So one thing about close range illustrissimo, as Tatang always says, make friends with your opponent's weapon. So here, if he's gonna throw a strike, I'm not concerned with this. I don't want to block his blade. He's close to me. I'm just going to hit him, his hand out of the way and cut right for his body. Now here, the blade is stuck. Let's say it's an actual blade. It's stuck in his guts. You're gonna, there's going to be a little bit of pull. And he's also expecting, he knows your weapon is down here now. So you have to abanico out of that range. He's expecting this. You hit here, he's going to drop here a little bit. You can either, if it's stuck, pull it out here or just pull back here and hit him right up here. So the abanico goes from low to high and constantly switches. If you're here, you don't want to come here. They're expecting there. So you go low, high. And that's it. Checking his hand with your non-weapon hand. Bam. And you still have... You still have that keeping his weapon in check. You can also, of course, move over and check him, his arm with your blade. But why? You just cut him. So just hit him right in the head. So that's the abanico in close range. Anyone have any questions about that? All right, let's do it then. Let's let's practice a little bit. I'm going to set a timer and we're going to just do striking in a circle. You're going to pivot every time you step. Let's say you step to the side, pull your back foot behind you and pivot your hips. So notice my hips are straight on. Now they're tilted. So step to the side, pivot. Step to the side, pivot step to the side, pivot. So you're constantly going in a circle. All right, let's set a timer here. And can you set a timer on your phone for one minute? Just tell me when to go. Okay, all right, everyone get in your stance and you're just gonna be striking. Try practicing your arco strike. You can extend with it, throw right, the tip. Yeah. All right, here we go. One minute and go. Practice throwing strikes and moving in a circle.
You can just throw arcos if you want to practice them. You can throw angelos, whatever you want. You can move in the other direction. You don't have to get dizzy with the other leg lead or with the same leg lead. All right, that's one minute. How's everybody feeling? Let's see. Oh, wonderful. Some people are doing the. All right, so the other concept I haven't mentioned, well, I've mentioned it for sure, is with the footwork, the concept. <laughs> Yeah, some people are getting dizzy. That's all right. You can change directions always. Um, another concept is una pulgada, the idea of one inch. You should be able to hit your opponent while they miss you by an inch. Um, and pivoting and small footwork is essential for that. Um, another thing that you can do, especially if you need some sparring drills, um, if you have a padded stick, or even if you don't, it doesn't matter, um, find something that you can hit. Be nice to the trees. I know a lot of people like to beat up trees. Be nice to the trees. Put a pad on the tree. <laughs> uh, if you, or if you have a punching bag, a heavy bag or something. So go up to your heavy bag or whatever it is. Yes, I'm a tree hugger. Um, and you're just going to throw one strike. Um, the same strike over and over again. One of my favorites to throw, and it's also Master Tony Diego's uh, special strike, is just a one angelo hit and repeat. So just throw one strike over and over again, because you'll notice that when you're sparring, you're not throwing all your fancy moves all the time. Yes, you're using them at the uh, appropriate time, but you want to be able to do a few strikes just consistently over and over again. Sparring is is as much about having good technique as it is about just being able to last. So someone could have really strong strikes and gas out really fast. So if you can just keep going and keep throwing, you're good a lot of the times. So, um, well, as long as you come in like swinging, you know. Um, so yeah, take one strike and just hit the target over and over again. It doesn't matter how weak it gets, just hit it. Bop, 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 over and over and over again until you ad nauseum. Um, does anyone have any questions about anything? Could I show blocking and guarding my live hand? So do you mean using it to block or protecting it. One thing is, is don't extend it. If you're trying to protect your live hand, don't extend it out beyond your weapon because then it's just a target. Keep your weapon in front of you and the other one slightly behind. This one comes into play a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, one thing, I'll need my assistant again. Rob! <laughs> Okay, so blocking using your live hand. Now in the, in the Largo range, this is not gonna come into play very much because if you put it out, it's more of a liability than anything in the long range. Um, you can use it sometimes in long range to pass their weapon through. Um, let's say they're coming this way. You can use this hand to pass their weapon through, especially if you've already cut them here, let's say they're coming here, you cut them here, pass their weapon through with that hand. There are, there are only a few times in Largo range that you'll wanna do that. Otherwise you're just putting it in the way to get cut. 
um, medial range and in close range is essential. So, as I said before, close range, you're gonna be using your checking hand as much as you will be using your weapon hand. This, again, you don't wanna go through, you don't pasar sa bastón, you don't wanna pass through the stick with your weapon, you don't have to. So here, if the strike is coming vertically like this, you're gonna hit their weapon, their hand this way and move out. If the strike is coming this way and it's very horizontal, you can block this way and just cut at the same time. So cut and strike or cut, check and continue to strike this way. So your checking hand in close range is essential. Medial range also. So yes, so let's say off of a thrust, you're gonna, you're gonna push their blade aside as you cut their arm. So this hand, any thrust coming in, just bat it away, but you have to do it as you move. If you just go like this, they can still come back and hit you. You have to cut them. It's all, all together is what makes the technique work. If you just do one aspect of the technique, you're going to be leaving yourself vulnerable. You have to move your feet. And of course, there's other techniques for when you're sitting down and you can't move, but that's an emergency situation. So they're coming at you with a thrust. You don't block the thrust, you cut them and move. Just push the, the power is coming forward. So you can push it to the side with, even if they're super strong, you can still bat it to the side as you move, evade it. So cut and pass. And you notice I caught a few targets on the way through. So that's how you use your hand in medial range or in close range. Also long range, but not as much. Any other questions? That was a good question. No questions? What time is it? Oh, it looks like we're at, we're running out of time. Well, definitely look me up, collisfightclub.com. Um, I'll be in Rochester, New York, or I will be out in California. Um, but find me on Facebook, find me on Instagram. I'm around. I think there was a couple questions left over still, Sabrina. And thanks, oh. by the way. Let's see, um, where, where did it go? Wow, people are enjoying it. Oh, where did it? Oh, Chris Ball was asking any other any other core concepts of the art that you could ball up for people. Oh, well, Illustrissimo is a very combative style. So make friends with their weapon, go direct to the target, always be threatening your opponent with your weapon. So don't take it away. So don't take it behind you, keep it in front. Um, and even when you're blocking your, your umbrella type blocks, keep your weapon pointed at them because you can always come in with a thrust. Um, yeah. Thank Maybe you so much. That was great. Easily, like walking. Oh, anytime. A lot of fun. Oh, someone asked if I'm doing Zoom classes. I was thinking about it. I have my Zoom fencing classes, um, but let me know if you're interested. Uh, some of my students have been asking about when I'm doing a Zoom class. So I'll be, if you're interested, let me know and I can give you the details when I do one. Very cool. Anything else, anyone? Lots of good feedback, Sabrina. No, oh, I, know, great. I would add to that. I, I like but walking through stuff because sometimes you learn more than that than you realize uh, and, and doing is really how you learn. So I really appreciate that and, and having people go through the reps and feel it, right? If you can't feel it, you can't do it. Absolutely. Practice your strikes, everybody. Do your footwork. Footwork's super important. 
Excellent. So so happy you could make it. Thanks for. Uh, I, I I said you know who else can I get? And I just for some reason you popped into my head, and I really appreciate you coming and sharing. Definitely. Oh great! Well, thanks for having me. It was nice. It was a nice way to end it. A nice way to cap things off. Definitely. Anything else you want to say? I, I got your announcements. I'll try to. I'll do another post at linking you, and you can please chime in on that and uh, add any other links you want so people can get a hold of you. Oh great! Yeah. Uh, find me, callisfightclub.com, or Instagram or Facebook is fine.